Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, and I'm back with another quick video for you guys today. Today, I'm gonna share some of the video footage of the delivery of our Sile X5. The Sile is just a really small CNC that we bought specifically to make really, really small parts with really small end mills. It's got a very fast 24,000 RPM spindle with an automatic tool changer built in, a wine rack style automatic tool changer, not a carousel like you might have seen before, and it's got servos. It was just something that was relatively inexpensive. We would have liked to have had the budget to invest in something a little bit more high end. Unfortunately, the money just wasn't there. If you guys haven't been following along with my story, here's the gist of it. I have a small manufacturing business here in California, and about four or five months ago, I invested in a lower end CNC and didn't have any luck. I ended up sending it back, and then I bought a Haas Super Mini Mill 2. Now, I'm a noob. I'm not a machinist. I'm not a trained machinist. I've learned everything I know basically by reading forums, watching YouTube videos, stuff like that. All in all, we run the Super Mini Mill every single day, and we've got the tool path so refined and mapped out that it makes clean parts every time we hit the cycle start button. We've implemented some macros and in-process gauging, and then we verify those things before anything comes out of the mill with gauge pins and things like that. So we're super, super happy. In hindsight, if I could do it all over again, I probably would have bought a VF2, just so we had a little bit more rigidity, a little bit more horsepower, and I just like the idea of being able to like have more light for filming and stuff like that for YouTube. You know, obviously hindsight's 2020, but the Super Mini Mill is doing its job and it's doing it really well. And so that's enough about that. Let's get to the footage of this Sile X5 being delivered. That's my kind of crate, you know? I thought it's a beautiful toy. It is a beautiful toy. Yeah, it's big. It's bigger than me. Man, oh man. Bottom of the pallet was kind of really soft. It was like some type of really soft plywood. And as you can see in some of the pictures and video here, the side panels had already started to fall off. Either way, we got this thing out onto the lift gate, lowered it down, and pushed it into the shop. And then the uncrating process began. It was really pretty straightforward. Nothing was really all that tight. These were just nailed together and some of the panels were already loose. Well, we've got some tin snips. We've got the mill here. The lighting's not the best. Looks like some of the panels came loose. It's, uh, there aren't any like two by twos joining the panels and it's, they use nails. Um, so the crate kind of looks like it started to come apart a little bit. I'm guessing there's probably no damage. We won't know until we get it open. So tin snips, let's get the bands off, get some of the panels off and see what we got. Okay, sorry for the audio. I'm just using the mic on my phone. I use my phone all the time. We got the crate off. The crate was a little bit broken up. It definitely started to come apart in some spots. I felt like the crate was built pretty well, but it, I'm sure it was just probably rough coming over the ocean and they use mostly nails. But there really doesn't seem to be any damage outwardly. The only thing I've noticed so far is right down here, there's a couple of nicks in the paint, which I'm not super worried about. After we get the cellophane off right now, I'll grab the camera and we'll do a quick walk around. I know what you're thinking. I could have just cut this off, but I could use the exercise. There it is. It's my Sile X5. 24,000 RPM spindle, wine rack style tool changer. And that's it, it's pretty basic other than that. It's running on Mach 3. I didn't opt for the higher end industrial LNC or even higher grade controllers because it just really wasn't in the budget at this point. And I've had good luck running Mach 3. I have a CNC router right here off camera you guys probably can't see, but I've been running it using Mach 3 and a Gecko G540 for years with absolute reliability. So we're gonna give this a whirl. I'm pretty excited. I guess now let me just grab the camera and we'll take a little, little walk around. The only damage I see outwardly, looks like there's a couple little nicks in the paint right here. Not too worried about that. You can see the side looks good. Come around. Here's the inside. Looks like there's some, some residue and some oil and stuff like that, probably for shipping protection. Of course, they've got this red cosmoline or protectant on there and the column is braced. You'll see that this is a 
24,000 ATC style spindle. It's really a, a spindle that's very much similar to a spindle like this, only it's got an automatic tool changer built in. I'm guessing that maybe there's a keyboard here? Maybe, yeah, no? Is this some type of, yeah, I guess I'll figure that out, but I'm guessing that that's a keyboard right there that folds down. You can see there's the e-stop. Here's the other side of the machine. The corners all look crisp, nothing looks, nothing looks mangled. And uh, here's the, the back section. I'll back up a little bit for you guys. I'm guessing that that's like a little toolkit. I'm not exactly sure what those metal braces are, but my guess is that they're probably to brace the, the upper portion of the cabinet. I really don't know. I'm seeing this just this is the first time, just as you guys are. Of course, we have the oiling system. Looks like there's an air oil separator on there. And uh, I'm not sure if this one comes out. Boy, there's a, little, there's a little latch in here. And there's one down here too. There. And so this, this is the uh, cabinet. So you can see we've got the VFD, got the AdTech drives, wiring is all nice and clean. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty happy with what I see. Now we just have to get this thing powered up. Looks like they ship it with a European style plug. Obviously we're in the United States and we don't use this plug, so this will have to be changed. And uh, take it from there. I'm gonna actually get in touch with the boys from Style America now, just to double check all the voltage and stuff like that. And uh, that's that, that's it, that's it you guys. That's that's the Sile X5 that we just got. So we'll do some more videos as soon as we get this thing up, running and cutting. All in all, the machines seemed to arrive in, in decent condition. There were a few loose screws, the doors were snug, stuff like that. Things like little gremlins that obviously you probably need to fix just from shipping. In the power cabinet, there were a couple issues I had to deal with. One was that it came with a European style plug, which we just snipped off and we put on an American style plug for 208 volt single phase power. Then we ended up having to plug in all the servos into the drivers. I only ended up buying Mach 3. So a lot of people ask, why didn't you buy like the LNC industrial controller? Well, I would have loved to have had the LNC industrial controller and a probing system and all this stuff, but we just, it just wasn't in the budget at this point. And so this was kind of like the, the lowest viable commercial style option for what we really wanted to do. And I really didn't want to outsource parts any more than we have already have in the past. So the saw, I just thought the saw would be a, a kind of a good balance. We weren't expecting a super high-end industrial grade machine, and that's not what Sile told us we were getting. They, I mean, they were pretty clear about what this machine is and what it was capable of. So, so there's no, been no qualms about that. I ended up just putting a new plug on, plugging in all the servos, booting everything up, and boom, it was rocking and rolling. All right, we've got this thing set up. We've got it powered up. We've got air. We wiped it down. And uh, the, we referenced the machine to make sure that it homed out appropriately, and it did. And so now this is the first time running some G-code. So it looks like it's just a little circle program that they programmed at the manufacturer before they shipped it. So let's go ahead and hit go and see what we get. Looks like it found its coordinate system. And there it goes. Let me move the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see a little bit better. We're only gonna be using a few different end mills, and so we wanted some type of a tool changer, but obviously we didn't have the budget for a carousel style tool changer. And so the boys over at Sile put this together for me. This is a little wine rack style tool changer. Let me show you some close up footage of this. And these are actually just little itty bitty ISO 20 tool holders. These things are like literally the size of your finger. They're, they're micro mini. And you can see right here, we're comparing it to a Cat 40. I mean, it's just, it's, it's actually hilarious. We'll probably never use an end mill bigger than three millimeters for what we're doing. Maybe if we're working on some fixturing or something like that in the machine, then maybe we'll use like, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch or a six millimeter end mill, but that'll be pretty rare, pretty far and few in between. All in all, the quality of the machine is pretty decent. It's not high end, like I said. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Sile. I'm not trying to tell you to buy a Sile. I'm just trying to share my story with you guys. Take this for what it's worth. One of my biggest complaints on the first machine I ever bought was that it didn't, its backlash was just out of control and it's hard to cut something really accurately when you have backlash. And if you've ever heard stories about old time machinists in manual machines always taking conventional cuts, you know, you kind of jog the machine into position uh, with the DROs, lock down the Gibbs, and then you take your cut. And the reason you take a conventional cut on an old machine 
is because you were working against the backlash. You were creating continuous pressure, which would make it even. And so you hear stories of guys that have these old machines, these old manual machines with 60,000s, 80,000s, 100,000s in backlash, and they try to take a climb cut, and it just sucks the end mill right into the part or rips the part right out of the vise. It's, it's, it's pretty gnarly, so. I ended up testing the backlash in this machine, and so rather than me tell you, let me just show you real quick. All right, today I thought we'd do a little bit of backlash testing since that's kind of been a big deal to me in some of my other projects. I've got my Mitsutoyu 10th gauge out. We're gonna run 3000s positive in the X, and then we'll go 3000s negative and bring it back to zero. And then just to see if there's any stiction or, you know, preload on any of the, the ball screws, we'll run 3000s negative one at a time, and then we'll run it back to zero. So let's try this real quick. So one, two, three, take it back. One, two, three, now back the other way. One, two, three. And then back the other way. One, two, three. I'd say this machine is, I'm impressed. I'm actually really impressed. So I don't know, half a thou, you know, four to six tenths ish. Not too shabby, right? I mean, five, six tenths. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's, it's pretty respectable, especially for a, for a very a relatively low end machine with a very small work envelope. You know, this thing, it does have linear rails. It does have AdTech QS7 servos, but obviously it's not a super high end, super rigid machine. And that's, you know, of course, Sile has never claimed that it was. I'm pretty pumped. I've already created a couple of tool paths and posted them out and I've done some, I've cut a little bit of air just to make sure that everything's functioning properly. We're chasing the macro to get the tool changer to work and I'm sure we'll get that sorted out here pretty soon. Sam from CNC4XR7, I hope I didn't butcher that, is helping us create a new screen set for Mach 3 and he's gonna help us write the macro. And so once we have some time, we'll get to work on that and I'll share the progress with you guys. If you guys have questions or comments, let me know. Okay guys, well that's about it. If you guys like this video, please consider clicking the thumbs up. If you wanna be notified when new stuff comes out, subscribe and then click on the little notification bell and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.